הסיבות, אפיק דסריקות. Jadi cerita kita sekarang kehilangan kunci mobil. Yang direkam dong, tangkapan ini jadinya. <laughs> Dan sunset udah mau mulai. Kita bingung. Ini jadinya sunset tadi. Bawah juga nggak ada. Gua curiga di sini mendem. Di tanah ini. Mungkin jatuh ke jurang sana. Rusdi sent us back to the hotel by taxi while he and the car owner searching for the key in the dark until middle of the night. Cappadocia itself is quite famous with their deadly viper snakes and they started to hiss and we got surrounded. But thanks God Rudy found the key and one got hurt. <laughs> Hello everyone, now I literally being Turkish Imam. <laughs> Look at that, new hat. Now I'm in Pasabagalari, or the other name, aka uh, Fairy Chimney, or in Indonesian language we call it uh, Cerobong Pari. If you guys still remember, last time we, we visit uh, Goreme Open Air Museum. There are a place where all the noon staying, and some of them, they separated themselves to this cave, or this kind of stone separate themselves to having better time a good time for praying and also for meditation and to enhance themselves being a better person Okay, now we are on top of the chimney. Um, so officially there are no like kind of stair down there. It was there a stair over there, but uh, they kind of remove it. So to be up here, you have to climb through the rock and um, literally like pulling up to the rock. Basically not many people knowing this place. We are the one who's starting to going up here. So then everyone then start following us. <laughs> yeah, but well, it's pretty, interesting and beautiful view to see from this side. So, we just finished from Pasabaklari. Weather is so hot until you know we got no bleeding. Three of us. Three of us. For the first time in my life, maybe not the first, the second time in my life, I got no bleeding. I don't know what we call it in English, but in Indonesia we call it mimisa. And now we are going to go to Daringkuyu. Daringkuyu is the hidden underground city. The unofficial stories say that the city was accidentally discovered by a man found a hidden room behind a wall in his home. He saw a small hole on the wall, then he curiously dig it and revealed the gate to the hidden ancient underground city. That was how the discovery began. Risha, listen. Daring Kuyu underground city this underground city was established around 7th or 8th century before Christ. The city was built by ancient people to protect against invasion and invading force by Arab and Romanian. This city 
have been able to protect 20,000 inhabitants in the time. And those people never going out from the ground for more than 10 years. And this is how it looks like. There's literally a city in the ground. The city built by 18 layers to the ground, but only 12 ground that is reachable because the, the rest of them has been broken and not reachable to go in it. This underground city is not only in Daring Kuyu, but also in, from another city. And they're kind of tunnel that connecting between one underground city to another, another underground city. And somehow there's some, somewhere a hole going out in the middle of the city. So actually there is a population of human down here. It's really amazing, like how, how can people live in the ground where yeah. you actually can enjoy the sun and freedom. So amazing, we just keep going down and now at, at the second floor, they're still keep going more and more to the bottom. Deeper you go, colder it gets. It's still out of my imagination how could people used to live here in the ancient time. Wow, can you see there's a city below the city. This is another city on the ground. This part also. I really afraid to get lost in here. I don't know. This is really deep inside. And I think I have to go back. It's too deep. Think about it, people really dig this ground by some tools, manual tools, every inch of them, see, and there are a thousand population living here, and you know what, this is the way to the grave, It looks so scary, I don't think anyone going here because it's go to the grave. Uh, and uh, I, I think me too. Let's go back. Now, it's been an amazing story to tell to our generation. How human in the ancient time used to live and survive by rely on nature from time to time and season by season. Cappadocia in Persia means the land of beautiful horses. It's because during the time of Persian Empire, there were many wild horses living in this area. So they took a chance to have a sunset horse riding through the valley of Cappadocia. Aisha, kita naik kuda sayang. Naik kuda. Aisha senang sayang. Senang. Naik kuda. Ii, naik kuda. Oh. So, in this horse ride, you literally ride the horse by yourself. He just like walking behind you and telling us what to do. It's really fun though. And I will say that this is the first time in my life riding a horse myself without anyone um, controlling the rope. The road is a little bit dusty, but that makes sense because we are riding. Ooh. Okay. So this is how the experience of riding horse like doesn't feel scared like how I thought before because the how we call it mm -hmm. the chair uh, is quite stable and your feet also hanging on the on something <laughs> and if you pull to the left the hat will turn to the left and the horse will go to the left and also another way around if you pull to the right but if you pull the hat the horse will stop. So, but you have to release the, the rope so then um, the horse will keep going. And I think if I jump, <laughs> the horse will run. <laughs> so that's why the guy told me that don't jump. Now we are going to ride through the valley. We ride through the valley, look. <sighs> Woohoo! It's so fun. Resha seems like it. Right, Resha? Do you like it? Yeah, If you see beside me, um, this is the the stone that used to be the house for everyone in the ancient time. Um, 
there a window also a door So we take a break for a minute in here and then we continue again riding the horse. So that horse journey through the sunset ended our journey for today. Okay, good evening. Um, tonight we are eating in one of handmade, not handmade, homemade Turkish traditional restaurant in Cappadocia Regional Goreme. The restaurant name is uh, Kale Terrace Restaurant. Kale Terrace Restaurant. It's not that far from a Dibek restaurant. Actually, we want to go to Dibek restaurant, but sadly they are closed due to the um, national holiday in uh, Cappadocia. So we go to another restaurant nearby. And I think this restaurant also have a really good food and a good performance when they are uh, showing us how to present or how to preserve something on the table. Here we order a uh, testi dana kebab. They put it inside a, uh, what we call it, kendi. <laughs> In Indonesia, maybe we call it kendi. And the other one we order sakkava dana. And there's like a, a fire down there. It looks so dangerous. We like something dangerous. So that was the performance. And now let's we try how the food tastes like. This is the meat and with the rice in the middle. No, there is chicken. Oh. Hmm. So that's the rice? These are good. Now let's just try the one that inside something. What we call it? Inside the vase. Ooh. It's not hot. Wow. It's so good. Understanding the culture of visited country and tasting their food are part of the journey that we impossibly to pass because a good food bring longing and taking us back. Okay, good morning. Today we will end our trip in Cappadocia by going to Tuscolu. Tuskolu that means uh, Tus Lake. This is kind of salt lake in uh, Turkey, and this is the second highest, uh, second biggest lake in Turkey. So all the ground will be white color, in white color, as you see there. Mm -hmm. It is Tuskolu. We will take some photo and a drone shoot. A lot of thing there. Let's we take a look. Seems like later a lot of people coming to this place. Expectation versus reality. Okay, okay. This is the dilemma of traveling with baby. She doesn't want to walk. She just wants to stay here because she likes this place. And then she run. Hey, 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 hey. So actually, the ground should be covered by the by the water. But since we are coming here in, summer. in the middle of the summertime, so the water get more further and further from the <laughs> from the shore. We don't have mood to walk really far away over there, where we can find like a, a, a shallow water. So 
this is too slick. Look at this. This is salt, guys. Risha, wanna try? No. <laughs> so that is not sand, right? This is really a salt. See? Like this. They also shelling the salt. And finally, we find a really good photo spot. We will walk there. We stop here, and we found this one single tree. Okay, so Rusdi losing give, um, something again now. Give mistake again. Not just me. You <laughs> almost forgot the DJI the Osmo one. in the toilet. So we rush back to the Tuskolu to pick up this. And luckily, he still have it. Now we have to rush again to the airport. This is the magic for Turkey, I think. They're so kindly. Wait. So, at the end, we took the best path to the airport by taking the freeway. And surprisingly, we are the only one who being there. The reason behind? Turkey's freeway is so expensive and a normal highway quite sufficient for the daily route. At the end of the road, we seems taking a wrong turn and brought us to a remote small village. It was quite worrying because we have a flight in the next two hours but somehow like being stranded somewhere. Anyway, the road was quite pretty, surrounded by yellow field and the colorful sky. Okay, finally we are done from Cappadocia. Now we have to go back to Istanbul and go back to Germany. Yay! Bye bye, Cappadocia.